Hi! So, we're doing a different kind of video today. I'm actually going to start doing book reviews on this channel. Um, I used to write book reviews on my blog, but I got a little bit fed up of writing them, so we're going to try them in vlog format instead. The book I'm reviewing today is not the typical sort of book that I would normally read or that I'll be reviewing on here. Um, I read lots of different things, um, aside from chiclet. I'm not a big fan of chiclet. <laughs> But anything else I am open to reading. So today I am reviewing a Star Wars book and actually it's a Star Wars book that I've read before Josh and Josh is the biggest Star Wars fan I know so the fact that I've read it before him is somewhat of an achievement. Um, as I've said Josh is the biggest Star Wars fan out of both of us. Um, he's loved Star Wars right from being a little kid so his knowledge of the Star Wars universe is far superior to mine so don't expect this to be like an in-depth in detail review on the Star Wars universe because I just do not have the knowledge to do that. <laughs> um, I will class myself as a Star Wars fan now, Josh has definitely turned me into one so I'm going to give this my best shot but it will mainly just be a brief overview of the book. I've also got some notes on my phone so if I occasionally look down that is why. Anyway, on with the review and I am actually reviewing Star Wars Myths and Fables by George Mann. Um, it has got some illustrations but I read it on my Kindle so I would say if you're getting like the physical copy of the book it probably looks even better with the illustrations in it. It's not a very long book, I think it's um, definitely designed for my like more young adult the, and definitely the lower age range of young adult but anyway any Star Wars fan can enjoy it. I am not opposed to reading children's or young adults books so let's just crack on with it. Each of the stories, there are nine stories in total in the book and they are all um, in universe. I'm a bit sketchy on the knowledge but I know that the Legends stuff sort of got split off from the Star Wars canon when Disney took over but this is all um, in universe stuff. Disney approved canon stories. <laughs> so like I said there are nine in total, they're very very short reads, they're not they are myths and fables as it said they're not this is what did happen in the universe and there are characters in there where you're sort of like is it this person or is it not this person and there are characters in there that you do know like for example there is a story about General Grievous and it's very obvious that it's about General Grievous there is a story in there about Darth Vader to bigger fans it was probably very obvious it's about Darth Vader um, I did know it was but I think it would be more obvious to bigger fans. Um, and there's also a witch in one of the stories. I'm guessing it's meant to be like one of the Night Sisters because they are the only witches that I know of in the Star Wars universe. But anyway, <laughs> um, I'm not gonna review each story individually because that would just go on for far too long. But I definitely had my favourites over some, some of the others. They were all pretty good, I will say. I did have some of my favourites. Um, so as I said there is one story about um, General Grievous and there is one story about Darth Vader. They were both pretty good. I think I preferred the General Grievous one over the Darth Vader one. Um, I felt like the Darth Vader one was just lacking a little bit of detail over the General Grievous one that was a lot more in depth or as in depth as you can get for a 10 minute story. Um, there are actually two short stories in here that are about Batu, which obviously is Galaxy's Edge at Disney World and Disneyland so Black Spire Outpost. One is called The Black Spire and the other one is called Chasing Ghosts which is actually mainly set in Ogre's Cantina again which is at Disney World and Disneyland. I actually really really liked the two stories um, that I set on Batu. I liked that you're getting a little bit of backstory considering that Galaxy's Edge is about to open in Disney World and has already opened in Disneyland. So I liked that they were in there. Obviously it's it's pretty obvious that they're in there because Galaxy's Edge is opening now. But I do think the two stories about Batu were my favourites in the book. Um, especially the last one which is Chasing Ghosts. That one I think is my favourite out of the whole book. Um, it was very very good and it's got me even more excited to visit Galaxy's Edge now even though we won't be going for a good few years yet. I also really liked one of the stories called Gaze of Stone and obviously I'm not going to give away too many details you'll just have to read it 
but it is about a Sith Lord and his apprentice and I got really really strong Clone Wars vibes from that if you've watched the Clone Wars cartoon it, it's not about that story it's about a different Sith Lord and um, a different apprentice but it very much reminded me and this is where I'm going to get a little bit nerdy now it very much reminded me of the Clone Wars episodes where Count Dooku gets a new apprentice um, Savage Press and yeah I got those sort of vibes from it even though it's not about those characters um, so I really liked that one because I really like Clone Wars um, so I would say that's probably my second favourite aside from Chasing Ghosts um, and as I said there's another story called The Witch and the Wookiee and I'm assuming the witch in the story is a night sister um, because I don't know of any more witches in Star Wars. I'm sure someone's going to correct me on that. I mean, Josh might even correct me on that. But for me, I only know of the Night Sisters, so I'm going to assume that the witch in the Witch and the Wookiee is a Night Sister. <laughs> um, as I said, overall, it was really short read. You could probably get it done in a day. I think it took me about a day to read it. It's about 200 pages long. Each story in it is about 10 minutes long in total. If you're a big Star Wars fan, I would definitely, definitely read it. Um, as I said, they're not supposed to be like, this is definitely what happened. They are myths and fables, and like myths and fables anywhere else, it is up to you to interpret whether there is any truth behind it or not. But it was very enjoyable for my very first venture into Star Wars books. I very much enjoyed it, and I would actually like the physical copy of the book, because I think the illustrations in it would be very good. Um, so yeah. That was my very brief review for Star Wars Myths and Fables, but I do highly recommend you read it if you are a Star Wars fan, or if, like me, you are wanting to try a Star Wars book for the first time. This is a very good place to start off. So, with that being said, we're going to get gone, and we'll see you guys next time.